Okay, mic check, and uh, okay, good. Just making sure I got the audio on. Um, welcome, one and all, to that thing I do on weekends, and a change in games. Not in series, because, you know, Saturdays, but, you know. So, after completing Armored Core 2 Another Age, didn't go back and get all the secret parts yet, might wind up doing that on my own time later. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I'll wind up doing it at some point because I just want to complete file. But, uh, yeah, I need to move on to the next game. And this is one I actually have a bit more memory for. And because um, I, I honestly think I've played it as much as the last one, but more recently. Armored Core 3. And, uh... As much as I love the intro for the previous one, I love the intro to this one a lot. Um, oh, welcome back, King Thunder. So I'm just going to go on ahead and get right to it while I'm trying to remember where one of my pieces of paper went. So there's that. One moment. And I'm going to shut up for this cutscene, too, because, I mean, once it starts... Ooh. Yeah, this, this intro is, is epic, and I'm going to keep quiet for it. Like I've done with most, if not all, of the last ones. Okay, um, even as much as I love the last game's intro, to, to actually go back and look at it now, that one is superior in, in every possible way that I can think of. If that doesn't get you pumped from mech combat, I don't know what will. Um, 
I mean, it even goes so far as to show off some of the new features in the in the game. Uh, they show the Exceed Orbit core. Um, I guess you could say they inadvertently showed off Wingman, because I don't recall any of the other AC intros having two pilots acting in tandem, but, you know, that one, I'll, uh, I'll let that one slide, though. But, uh, yeah, that is... Yeah, so that is the intro you tried to draw a shot of. I remember you mentioning that. Oh, man. I need to pick up a pencil, actually get some more uh, practice drawing. I can, I can draw slightly better than stick figures. So, hearing anyone who can draw is, like, uh, kind of envious. <laughs> well, I want to see something in load game right quick, because I, I haven't played this game in, in years, and, uh, not on that card, because I checked that. Oh, it must be the other card that I removed. Okay, just wanted to see how far I got, because, uh, my red memory card apparently has, uh, old data on here. But I've got the yellow and blue hooked up. I found a third memory card I didn't even remember I owned. But that's neither here nor there, and that's not getting into this awesome, awesome ass game. So let's see. Why did I go to load again? Ugh, wake up! New game. I promise this isn't going to be like that last uh, stream that I did. It's not going to be two hours and me falling asleep at like the hour and 30 mark. <laughs> that's, uh... I like to test my limits, but I think I found that one. <laughs> okay. But in all seriousness, though, it's nice to see these options, like, right up front, and I don't have a that sound system, so next. Okay. Register a pilot name. And I'm going to stick with my usual for the purposes of this stream. Let's see. Ah. Eh, this one's closer. There we go. <laughs> it's the wrong X, but close enough. It is functionally equivalent. Okay, so this game... One entity ruled Ooh. the world. It was simply called the Controller. The Controller handled the major decisions of everyone's life. People took it for granted that the controller would handle every aspect of their lives for them. Under the rule of the controller, people lived safe yet uninspired lives of a promised prosperity. As time went on, several powerful factors known as corporations came on the scene. In their separate struggles to gain absolute power, the corporations waged war upon each other. The controller even manipulated the corporation's war. Always going according to the plans of the controller, but somehow the forces of chaos began to rise. Oh man, fat man. Okay, um, I want to come back to that in just a second. Um, what was, what was I going to say? So yeah, this game, 2002. Just going to run down the stats though, real quick, before I get into it, like. Full on. There. Oh, we'll intro mission stuff. Yeah, so they've been banging our Armored Core games out almost every year by this point, and uh, now we've got stuff like lines. Motion Blur in here. We've got some graphical improvements, and um, some nice wholesome goodness. Um, but yeah, this one's apparently, according to Wikipedia, it signifies a little possible divide in, in canon storylines. Um... I really need to read more into that, but kind of skimmed there. Um, now, as for that Fat Man fight, oh man, um, <laughs> I think every time I've played that fight has been with headphones on. Oh my god, this feels so good. Um, so yeah, I, I'm usually listening for the the beeps of the bombs. So when he when you don't have headphones on, it makes that fight considerably harder. So I, that hour deadline. That hour time that, that it took to beat, I can totally see that, especially on a difficulty above easy, because I played on easy and that that's that fight was tense. Okay, come on. Transport plane. Oh crap! They're sending it back. I thought I'd run out. 
Yeah, he places those bombs very difficult to see in some places. But that, I think, is my favorite boss battle in the game. I mean, personally, I don't mind the uh, vamp bridge sequence. Um, well, I guess you could call it a bridge. But, um, Batman loved that fight. Oh, what the? Ooh, come on. Getting a little stun action in here. Ooh, these guys, they got, they got the heavy guns. Rats on beating Fat Man, by the way, because uh, that fight, that is, that's some fun stuff to me. Can't wait to eventually get my copy of Metal Gear Solid 2 out and uh, give that a crack. If I can, if I play Metal Gear Solid 2, I want to see if my uh, PC copy of Substance works. Because um, I've got the PS2 base copy. If it doesn't... Ooh. Welcome to the ranks of an elite few. Rings. Objective achieved. Maybe it's just the amount of time that I've already played this series now, but this starter AC feels really good. Um, got a little bit stun locked by some of the uh, enemy fire in those last three dudes that dropped down, but yeah, aside from that, feels nice and nimble. Um. So I just need to look up some optional parts on that end. Okay, and the Harrier. Oh, wow. I actually forgot about that boss battle. <laughs> wow, let's see. The whole other game from Liquid Line. I tend to remember the worst lines from these sequences, though. He was not kidding, though, about being a whole other game from Liquid, because, I mean... The helicopter fight sequence in the first Metal Gear Solid game, that was that was great. The uh, top of the tower, but the Harrier, similar vein, but faster. Just, just great music, just really high pace. It was good stuff all the way along. But the line I always remember is, you know, right after his eye gets wrecked, THEY GOT MY EYE! I mean, he doesn't sound like he's in a huge amount of pain. He's just like, well, shit! So that is so great. Okay. Oh, man, the sensor. Uh, yeah, if you didn't have headphones on, it's not a matter of sucking. I, I, I fully understand because not, not having directional hearing in, in, those, in that battle... It would it'd make it that... I'm stammering so bad. Not having directional hearing in that battle makes it way harder. It's time for more bombs! <laughs> and that telltale sound of his uh, roller skates as he goes across the battlefield. Oh, man. So, yeah. No more Nerves Concord, Raven's Nest. We've got the Global, global Cortez. It, Tex. Global Cortex. Damn it, I knew I should have had more coffee. But, uh, yeah. So, functions the similar. Functions the same, but, uh, yeah. Male. Bleh! I English good words now. Ugh. Ooh, Metal Gear Ray. Oh, yeah. I have really got to go back and replay that game because I did not remember Ray snapping the Harrier out 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 of the air. But it just, damn! I did remember the multi-Ray fight toward the uh, end of the game, and that was for me. That was probably the hardest boss fight in the game. It's the hardest one I'm remembering right off now, right off hand. Okay, so we got a new AC handler here. Same voice actor as just about always, I think. Uh, Lane Myers. Uh. Good day, Raven. Let me take a moment to introduce myself. 
My name is Lane Myers, and I'll be acting as your Global Cortex Liaison Representative. As I'm sure you are aware, Global Cortex is in the business of dispute resolution. The firm makes its money by hiring out Ravens, such as yourself, to clients in need of our special brand of mediation. By which he means robot murder. In our role as intermediary, we arrange mission assignments, offer a selection of mission escort units, and provide access to AC repair and shop facilities. To have our full backing, all we ask is that you perform your best. The mission assignments you choose to accept and how they are carried out is up to you. Global Cortex will not interfere with regard to these decisions. Please note, though, that if trouble should occur during a mission, Global Cortex will not intervene on your behalf. Again, let me welcome you aboard. I look forward to working with you. Uh, let's see. And now a message from the controller, the big AI that handles all the things for everyone. All right, let's see. How you doing, HAL 9000? This message is to notify Citizen 0824-FK3203 of their authentication as a Raven, which includes the right to operate ACs in support of activities registered through Global Cortex. Keep in mind that your actions while holding this position must at all times adhere to the laws set in place for maintaining order throughout Laird. Reports of any questionable activities will result in your immediate dismissal and the revoking of all rights and privileges associated with being a raven. Good luck in your endeavors. Can't help but wonder who was uh, the genius who decided to code in the good luck things into the big AI, or if that was something it, it learned, but... Okay. One moment. Okay. So, Chris Redfield's best ending. Done with RE1. Let's see. Ah, uh, the classic Jaws line. <laughs> and great way to put emphasis on the bitch. Oh, man. Now, there's another series I'll probably wind up doing a retrospective at some point in the theory in future, but um, that's going to be a good way off. That'll probably be like post-Armored Core. So, wow. But I do want to get all of those especially my copy of Resident Evil 2, but if not, I'm sure I can make do. Especially with that remake coming out. It, uh, let's see, options. Ah, these are about the same. That remake's looking like it's got a lot of good options to it. Um, a lot of good uh, side stuff, especially the Japanese Special Edition. Let's uh, go through here, take a peek. Ah, and I love this too, has the three AC layouts just immediately visible. Japanese uh, RE2 remake. They got like a collector's edition that comes with a typewriter themed um, PC keyboards, like a USB keyboard and some other fun props. Only problem is it costs a small fortune. I think they said it costs like close to a grand US. Oh yeah. Let's see. Arena fights and missions. Let's see. Yeah, that's something I tended to do quite a bit, is uh, churn through as much of the arena as I possibly could, and then go on to missions. So, I tended to, to sort of alternate like that. Not like a straight mission, arena, mission, arena, but mission, 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 mission. Oh, I can't do missions anymore? Arena, 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 arena. So probably be a little bit of that doing this doing this game uh, let's see do I have the shop or is it oh the shop is in the garage right okie dokie well I'm probably not going to do too much on this thing uh, right offhand I just want to see what optional parts we've got because that being stun locked that was that was kind of miserable shell based energy generator capacity oh I have no credits that's right okay So, Chris's story. What a tough guy, you cracked the case. Um, that is perplexing. 
Yet another reason for me to play that game? Damn it! <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going ahead and start off in the arena, because, um... Let's see... Guide Oz. That immediately reminded me of Zardoz, and I still need to watch that movie. So yeah, just going to drum up a little bit of uh, extra scratch real quick. See how far I can get with this AC. Ooh. Alright, so, facing Adieu and his AC Skydancer. He has a little experience and is painfully evident in every respect. His AC is poorly equipped and would stand almost no chance at the arena's higher levels. He's garnered a small fan base, given his willingness to try, but harsh lessons await. Also, something else I didn't notice, I don't think that it's in Armor Core 2, another age, I think it's mostly, if not entirely, a feature of this game. The reflections on the AC, the light amount of specular in here. It's a little bit shiny as it as it rotates. Okay. Same as most AC games, I tended to play a lot on the, uh, where is it? The arena. It's just straight up called arena in this game. But, for the purposes of the stream, I'm going to do a lot of dancing around. Oh yeah, he's he's Protag Kuhn. Sky Dancer here. I do in his Sky Dancer, he's totally Protag Kuhn. He's probably going to go to the arena, you know, running to his uh, AC in his garage with a piece of toast in his mouth. It's like, I'm late to a fight! <laughs> he's absolutely... Okay, let's see what you've got, not Hero Yui. Alright, here we go. Starting in the arena here. Okay, whoa. He's got Stormtrooper aim, that's cool. Oh, this generator simply will not do. The hell was that? Okay. Sound cut out on my end for a second. Okay. Yeah, this guy has, like, Star Wars level Terabat aim. I don't think any of the uh, starter arena drones were quite this bad. So that's forgiving, I suppose. Okay. Step up your game, Protag Coon. Alright. Or Protag Chan, possibly? Hmm. Okay. Yeah, my usual sideways figure eight dance is dodging so much of. Oh, he's gone. He's super gone. Alright. Okay, that was a. As expected, pretty easy. The first ones are always easy, though. It's nice that it doesn't throw you straight into the replay as well. Ah. Ooh, boy, well, one down. And since I'm doing, like... Ah, a little bit of credits there. Since I'm doing, like, previous um, AC games, like I'm doing, like, all of the previous ones, um, I have no Op Intensify or... Um, what was it? The, the Human Plus, I haven't done any of those. Okay, let's... Oh, right, the dupes. I think you're right there. I think I do have double radars, which is nonsensical, but hey, free cash. All right. As a matter of fact, before I go into the arena, ooh, new mail. I'll revisit that in a moment. So, let's see. Assembly. Assembly, where's that radar? So, you. And a Oh, wait. Did I go into the shop or assembly? Okay. Whatever. Huh. Apparently I have another missile launcher. Probably from the arena, actually. Um, so yeah, let's see. Huh. Well, no two radars, then. Bummer. 
that you have to earn off Intensify. I suppose I probably should have looked that up shortly before starting. But, there we go. Let's see, small missile. A different small missile. A uh, good bit more energy drain. More ammo. Double the weight. Alright, let's see. Hmm. Well, I think I'm going to keep these missile launchers for the moment. I'll worry about that as it comes up, because I have in the previous games switched between as missions are re required. Uh, well, I'm going to stick with this loadout for the most part, um, for a good while. So, let's check that mail before I pop back into another round. And I am going to play a mission before this, um, before this all ends. At least one. Okay, from the Global Cortex. Congratulations on your first victory. We hope you will continue to advance through the ranks. Each time you hit a certain rank, we will present you with a certain AC part report reward. The reward this time is a back part. Model number yada yada. Okay. So, slightly better missile launcher? Hmm. Op intensify. I know it's gonna bug me until I look that up, so I wanna look that I'll probably look that up uh, right after the stream. But uh, yeah, if it's a thing that you have to like earn and opt into that doesn't restart your entire game's progress, like Human Plus, then I'll revisit it because I remember the final arena opponent, and I don't mean this asshole. I mean, the final hidden one. The Kurosawa. Um, sure, I'd be more than happy to know about that one, because that has carried me through these games. Ah, welcome back, Alaskan Emily. You have just got in on the ground floor of this one, because <laughs> I've really just kind of started this one. I've played one arena match. I have played quite a bit of this one, and I wish I could say I were an expert, but I've never been an expert at these. I've always been, like, pseudo-casual, intermediate. Uh, <laughs> I have never had a head for stats, so I never did that deep dive. Okie dokie. Well, so I'm going to do probably two more arena opponents and then go right into a mission, because I want to get some scratch up here real quick. So, second one is this quadruped here. Wake up and AC Echo Head. An arena pilot of great skill once. He's had nothing but losses ever since a certain traumatic event. He claims to have put it behind him, but there's no doubt that he still struggles with the after effects. Most wonder if he can bounce back. Not if I have anything to say about it. Oh, he'll bounce when I smite him down. Oh man, but I want to get this thing moving. Um, cause I'm not gonna lie, I am pretty sure that this AC is the best starter AC of the ones I've, I've played. Not counting Armored Core 4, because I cannot remember it for the life of me. Also, nexts are way faster than, than normals, so... I suppose these would be normals, then. Okay, let's see. Oh, he's already cooking. Ooh, the legs, they animate. That is nice. I don't remember the legs animating in uh, another age, but... Uh, definitely appreciate that. Okay, come on. Just a little bit more. See, that alone is enough motivation for me to probably put a little bit more time into a uh, quad. Okay. Two down and 40-something uh, to go. I don't feel like doing the math. No replay. Not this time. Oh, man. The weird glidey legs. Because I know at least one of the uh, quads in the previous AC games 
had the excuse of having little rollers on the end, but... Eh. I can forgive it entirely, though, modeling restrictions and such, but by this point, they'd really started to... They really started to hit their stride, and this game is probably an improvement in just about every aspect on its predecessor. Um... So yeah. Oh, wow, I just went completely blank for a second. Okay, the Twin Heads, and we start with Twin Head B. And I've got to remember to get these emblems. Okay. Twin Head W's older sister. She usually fights alongside her brother in the role of main attack element, and in doing so, diverts attention away from his presence. Their difference in rank has ruffled her feathers a bit. Funny, feathers on a T-Rex. Alright. And the Patriot! Oh, man. And, oh, wait, no, I was... Oh, I overshot. Whoops. Well, crap. I have to look forward to that one next time. I'll have to look forward to that after a mission. Okay, so we're going to go with Strasbourg here. Strasbourg. And the AC Volcano, the first hover unit. A true hothead, all he can think about once an opponent is in his sights, is to engage. He sometimes gets so caught up in the action, he will actually stop in place and fire, and fire blind. So basically he's me, but with hover legs. <laughs> he has no respect for those afraid to take a little beating. Okay, never mind, he's not me at all. Alrighty. Do missions for Crest until... Destroy gun emplacements. Okay. Keep that in mind. And a new battlefield. The Underground Factory. I actually remember this from uh, a mission. You get a mission or two early on with uh, the Underground Factory as part of the uh, setting. So yeah, they're stepping up the speed gradually. Kind of, They kind of ease you in to the arena. Three fights and you get to a considerably faster opponent. Probably in, like, one or two more, they'll... Oh, yeah, here we go. And he doesn't have abysmal aim, but it's not great, so this is... This is nice. This is... Very well... Well done. And one of the rare attempts, I actually feel comfortable getting close with a blade. Okay. Of course, I say that, and my armor's kind of plummeting a bit. Okay, the Patriots. <laughs> there may or may not be 12 of them. Alright, come on, you stay in front of me. Give me the Philosopher's Legacy! And not that fake one. Come on. I don't know why I don't use this map more often, because it's it's not quite as open as the arena stage, but it's it's pretty open. You don't have like a whole lot of obstructions. So this one's it's nice. You got places for verticality, which I've never really seen come much in handy. But you know, when it does. There have been a few fights that have been won on, on verticality, but usually it's been extreme cases. Okay, so I'm going to leave Twin Head B here because, like I said, it is mission time. It is game day. Time to blow up some more buried robots. Oh, man, I forgot about the mission select screen here. The little layers. <laughs> because, I guess, layered. Alrighty. And the little control thing there in... Uh, the bottom right, right above the missions. This is... So much of this game that I forgot. Nice presentation all around. Alrighty, we have... Rest and... GC. Okay, who we got? Well, I think I want to do Defend the Arena one more time. <laughs> uh, nah, I'll go ahead with the end in place standoff. Defend the arena would almost feel like a cop-out, considering I just say I uh, want to get to a mission. 
End employee standoff in the Zidan Weapons Factory. Okay. A group of employees unhappy about our decision to shut down the Zidan Weapons Factory have taken over control. They've modified the factory's MTs for combat and are using them to keep the demolition team at bay. Remove them from the premises immediately. Closing the factory was a difficult decision, but had to be done in order to accommodate the need for more housing. Every day we are delayed is costing huge sums of money. We're sending you in to end the standoff and get the project back on track. Eliminate all targets in the factory. Alrighty. I'm going to have to get used to uh, pressing the X button a little. Alright, here we go. The wingmen, which I'm not going to select just yet but uh, yeah this is this is another great feature I'm really glad they added uh, in case you're like having trouble with a mission or just want someone else to soak up a few bullets um, hiring these little MT dudes and some of them show up in the arena later because I remember specifically Huntress and Scylla showing up at later in ACs but uh, yeah this, this is a great great ad See how many of these can I add at once? Okay, don't have enough to add two of them, but hmm. Wait a second. Never mind. Yeah, I list them both there at the same time. Okay, so I can't. Okay. So we've got another AC game where uh, one of the first missions is against construction equipment. So yeah, let's do this. Okie dokie. And get out of my habit of listening for the death sound cue. Because if it hasn't already been mentioned, you'll probably notice when I play, I tend to waste a few bullets on a dead AC because I don't notice the explosions. I'm Yeah, the consorts are great. Um, I have a tendency to um, listen for the sound cue of their death, which is a little bit more subtle than the explosions that come out of them. So... I tend to have that little bit of delay, and I, let, I lose a few bullets that way. Okay, woo! There goes one. And almost done. I think that's everyone. That's all of them. Let's okay, confirmed. Objective achieved. Alrighty, they ease you into the missions pretty good, too. Just a simple batch of MTs in this one. Okay. So, where are my usual... I like this screen, too. I'm loving everything about this game, though. I mean, I've been wanting to get to this one for a while, though. It's like another age. It's almost sad that they're back-to-back. -back. It's like a, these are the, the two that I really wanted to get to most. I guess because I've had the most nostalgia for him. Oh yeah, the destroy alert. I never remember to look for that. I feel like an idiot when I when I just completely forget it exists. Mail call. See from Crest. Good work, Raven. We appreciate your help. If you factory jobs have to be sacrificed for the greater good of society, then so be it. It's a harsh reality, but the decision to redevelop Sector 303 was made by the controller, and we aren't about to stand in the way. We sincerely hope you'll continue to assist us so that order can be maintained. And from Elaine... Since its inception, Laird has been governed by the controller, a complex and extremely powerful AI computer system. Needless to say, the importance of the controller's existence is hard to deny. All aspects of life for those living in Laird are managed and maintained by the controller. However, there seems to be some discontent among Laird's population, and the number of uprisings has increased in recent years. Perhaps the very system that is Laird is coming apart. Those who died today did so because they resisted the controller, but I still can't help feeling sorry for them. Ooh, boy. Something else I wouldn't mind doing a... I don't know... Armored Core Wiki or Fan Site Deep Dive On. 
because I, I mentioned earlier on that this uh, that this uh, game represents a possible split in timelines for AC games. Uh, I've seen references to this being a continuation of the previous ones, or to being another reboot, which honestly makes sense more sense to me. Um, but yeah, if it were a continuation of the other timeline, then I would have to wonder where La where Laird came from, where the controller came from, um, why they have an AI governing them, and if it has anything to do with Nine Ball, if that was in any way connected. So, let's see, mission, another mission real quick. Let's see, you defend the arena. This one from Global Cortex. Let's see. Information has come to light regarding a possible terrorist attack on Global Cortex interests. The instigators have yet to be revealed, but there is no mistaking their intentions. As far as we know, they plan to disable one of our arena facilities and force the cancellation of an upcoming match. Stand by on scene and make sure the attack does not succeed. An overwhelming show of force must be brought to bear, so that our response isn't misinterpreted. Hostilities against Global Cortex are not tolerated, and will be dealt with accordingly. Due to our stance on this matter, your reward will be determined by the number of enemy units destroyed. So they really want to encourage you to blow dudes up. Um, okay, so specific builds. Yeah, sadly, I've never played Silent Line. I, I really don't know whether I want to get the PS2 version or the PSP version. I'm going to have to look into that when it comes time, which it's coming time soon. But if I get the PSP version, then I'm going to have to get the uh, necessary cable for it. Okay. See, okay, start of another timeline. See, I was under that impression. Um, because it didn't make sense to me how this would be a continuation of two in another age, because it was kind of made apparent in uh, another age that humanity was coming out of the holes. So, you know, just all of a sudden be back in them. This didn't make much sense to me. Ah, oh, damn. Sorry for the sniffles. I just... I live in a really dusty environment, and I keep forgetting to look into nasal spray. It is killing me lately. I don't know what the deal is. Ooh. Also probably need to look into a... Oh, right. You won't be able to transfer a save PSP. Okay, good point. Starting from absolute zero would be kind of rough. Not insurmountable, but rough. I mean, because after all, my first playthrough on Another Age was... started from nothing. That was... That made things way more difficult. Okay, whoa! Looks like you could use a hand. No, Gaidaz, bugger off. Ah, oh, come on. I wanted to blow up more dudes. Come on. Okay. You're behind me. Okay. Ah, oh, come on. Uh, Mr. Picasso Man here trying to earn his keep, though. Can't fault him. Oh, that looks like a flechette rifle. That is... That's actually really cool. Oh, crap, I'm out of juice. Come on. I think he's shredding them all before I'm getting to him now. Okay. Uh. Arrgh. Oh, cool, I got the destroy on that one. Yeah, this generator has got to go. This is killing me. 
I mean, less literally than it would be in the previous games, but... Oh my god! Here we go. Back to the dance. Okie dokie. See, I want to keep saying... I want to say... I keep wanting to say something about uh, familiar territory in this mission, but, you know, a giant open ring is not familiar territory. This is an open field, but, you know, it's nice to have a good low-thought mission right out the gate. It's nice to, to not just press you in, and I think this game, of the ones I've played so far, just in what I've seen today, has been very well structured to that end. So I guess um, banging out an AC game pretty much just about every year. So those energy, those energy weapon arms. They kind of remind me of the flechette shotgun in uh, Star Wars Battlefront, but not the cancer one, the original one that's good. <laughs> um, so yeah, the little needly bits uh, had me thinking about that. Okay, more mail. Gaidaz. You're quite a pilot, Raven. I like your style. Oh, you mean where I run out of juice halfway through and... Eh. We make a good team and hopefully we'll have a chance to work together again. Okay. That's something else I kind of wish you could make more use of. The animated emblems there. I mean, obviously it doesn't make sense to spray paint, but you know. Okay, cell generator for a new one. All right, good point. Uh, let's see. So I'm going to do that. Knock out a couple more dudes in the arena, and then probably uh, probably do another mission. So shop. Still getting back used to this uh, UI. Oh my god. Let's see. Doesn't have the arrows. So. Hmm. A little bit of memorization time. Skim these stats real quick. Okay, main ones I usually look for are the, the, the two. The energy output maximum charge, so I'm going to skim this real quick. Okay, so 6 and 28. Uh, shop. Oh, not booster. Okay, I have 29. Let's see. Okay, that one's way heavy. Um, I'm leaning on this one, but it's still pretty... No, I don't think I'll be able to afford it. Uh, I generally favor um, higher output, too. So, so I don't get down to that red zone as soon. So I'm looking at this one, and I am liking this one. Because it's got like the highest output of the, the lower end. It also gives me a thermal detonator vibe. So, a solidly designed Kisaragi model. So let's see. Let's sell one. Let's sell my existing one. Oh. Rah. And this is another reason I don't need to extend it to two-hour streams. Because I'm falling asleep right now like an hour in. But that's something I like to do, though, is I like to test my limits. Something I'll probably do a bit more of in the coming year in different ways. Ooh, rocket launchers. Let's see. Okay, I'm gonna move my chat display a little closer. I'm not paying enough attention to it. I'm sorry. Sorry, right, party people. Let's see. Rifles and handguns. Oh, yeah, and Battlefront. Oh my god, I can't remember how much... I can't remember what I tended to lean toward in there. Ah, oh god, do I have any of the Battlefront games? I don't think I have any of them, but... Battlefront 2 on uh, the original Xbox. And I might... My memory might be bad on it. I might not even have that, because I haven't fired that up in forever. 
I know my brother has the PS2 version. And that's where I got most of my play in. Uh, boy. So, generators in? Oh, the CGP Raws. I think that's the one that I looked at that was... too expensive for the moment. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is the one that I was looking at, but, uh... This one has the higher output, this one has the higher max charge. So they are both in my wheelhouse. I get a heavyweight, I will be eyeing these heavily. But... Onward to the arena. Oh, two PS2 copies. Nice. Ooh, boy. Yeah, that's one thing about that game, is I kind of want to grab the PC version because it's... And I already read her intro earlier, so I'm just going to jump in. <laughs> but, uh, it's like I really want to grab a copy of the PC version of Battlefront 2, especially since they patched the multiplayer servers to work now. I mean, nice, but, um, oh yeah, PS2, oh yeah, I get it, sorry. But, um, yeah, you kind of lose out on uh, GOG in that you don't get the physical copies, but it's nice to be able to burn them, so... Legally. <laughs> oh man, I cannot help but seriously hope that they get some uh, emulation up on their website. That story they uh, they had a while back about them investigating uh, old console games. I am super there. Okay, come on. Dino Girl. She's got something else I need to look into. I don't know what that weapon is. I'm going to have to take a better look at it in stats later, but I need an energy weapon. Um, the monetary savings. That's that's where I start to look in. Because, yeah, I'm not looking enough at the, at the raw stats of the weapons. I'm looking at how much money I can save, because... <laughs> Oh, God, budget shopping bleeds into every aspect of my life. <laughs> oh, boy. He's got a little pink pew-pew gun, too. It's almost too bad there's not, like, a needler equivalent in these games. Because I'd be all in on that. Yeah, pulse gun. Okay. May not be a needler, but still, fear of the pink mist. Alrighty. One more arena round, and uh, then on to a mission. Let's see, make sure I'm actually picking the right one. And Snakewood and his AC Gateway. Is this a heavyweight reverse? Reverse joint and Exceed Orbit on top of that. That is an Exceed Orbit, isn't it? Hmm. Okay. He avoids being pulled into the more risky close-range battles, and for the most part only engages with a comfortable buffle when a comfortable buffer exists between him and his opponent. Since his AC lacks offensive strength, his fights can be long, drawn-out affairs. Yeah, I see that shield on him, though. And, if I'm not mistaken... That, I think, is a missile unit on his left hand. Which is kind of unique to me. I don't think they had those in the previous AC games. Alright. Energy rifles over pulse, uh, pulse guns? Yeah. Basically, the only reason I would really want a pulse gun is if I was really lacking in... Uh, weight capacity and just needed a gun on that hand. I don't know why I would come to that um, unfortunate situation, but if it were to occur, that's one possible option. Oh, this stage. I seem to remember having some ring out problems when I play this uh, before. Okay, come on best part is he doesn't have an energy blade to punish when I got, like, right on top of him. 
so much for staying distant. He's like moving hit and run, which is really weird with a missile um, missile hand. Come on, where are you at? You're right in front of me, and I can't see you. Oh, you. Oh, wow, about to ring out. Whoa. I also need to customize the cockpit because I notice I don't have anything like enemy weapon totals. Barely have it, like, I don't have any heat on there. I have their, their AP and that's it. Okay. Enough of this. Missiles, I need something with some tracking. This is... And they're going to go smacking into every tree. Okay. Maybe since this thing doesn't have a lot of energy usage, I can... Huh. Yeah. All right. Laser blade? No, his left hand is definitely a shield. And that weird launcher on his, on his uh, other hand, though. Don't know about that one, so... That's a rocket launcher. That would explain why I wasn't getting a lot of hits. So far, though, I'm liking this AC for the for the loadout. I gotta investigate the right arm, but... That was really cool at the end of this uh, last match. Just kind of fly for a minute. I don't know that I'm going to go full Altius on this. That would be kind of cool to have a build to try out. Um... But yeah. So I did say I'd do at least one more mission, because I'm going to have to go on ahead and bail kind of at earliest convenience this time. So I'm going to go ahead and knock off one more. And Mirage is the requester this time. Let's see. Oh, I meant enemy heat. Sorry. Yeah, the... Uh, Degree Celsius symbol? Yeah. I noticed my own heat, because it was going up, but I don't have, like, enemy heat. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, pop that on there while I'm thinking about it. And then I'm going to do that last mission. Yeah, because I like uh, as much input as I can on the enemy units. Even though I don't use all of it, it is, it is nice to have. So, enemy heat. Wrong weapon. Energy. You don't need their energy. That's not one that I usually do use. Data. Remnant's enemy's always been a good one. I, have, I would have two heat gauges this way, so that's... Unnecessary. Speedometer. And I don't use this one so much, so okay. Oh my god, the water section in MGS2. Uh... Yeah, it hits the frame rate pretty hard, so there's that. But, uh, oh man, that was. That was rough the first time through. I know I drowned a time or two. So. <laughs> have fun with that. And, uh, always remember if, uh, EE e. is a pain in the ass, she doesn't seem to resist Tranks all that well. <laughs> We'd like you to oh, well. But yeah, I do like this game having a minimal number of corporations. They kind of ease you into it. Unlike the previous games having seemingly, seemingly several. Data? Oh, what's he going to do? He's going to want to become a real boy. <laughs> That's about it. Okay. Considerable value, and we're unwilling to allow Kisaragi to corner the market. And speaking of data, you know, thanks for this mission briefing by Mr. Worf. After consultation with other corporations, it was decided that the mine's resources are to be equally distributed, and that we, Mirage, will take over its day to day operations. However, although Kisaragi agreed to this, they continue to mine the ore and are in clear violation of the arrangement that was settled upon. We want to avoid damage to the mine and its assets, but all Kisaragi personnel are to be removed from the facility. 
Oh boy. I just love the way it's throughout the entire series. They don't say destroy them usually, they don't say kill them, they just they keep it nice and clean and corporate, and I love that in the writing here. Let's check these consorts because I'm not gonna hire them again, because I'm a cheapskate. Oh my god, obligatory trains. Underwater levels. I'm not gonna lie, in early games, stuff like that, they were useful ways of padding out game length, but they weren't generally fun. It's like having escort missions. E E. So, uh... Oh, crap. Well, there goes a little bit of my, uh, heyday. Alright. Okay. Keep above them. Yeah, I think I'm gonna like this, this method. I'm gonna run out of juice, though. All right, that 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 worked surprisingly well. Uh, yeah, there are a lot of ways of fleshing out gameplay, and some work better than others. Um, backtracking through areas I've seen in so many games. Some games do it well, and that they'll change areas up a bit. Some games do it very poorly, and that you're going literally through the exact same area, and you wind up doing it a lot in some of them. Um. Grinding is another rough way to add artificial length to a game. And as soon as I actually stop being lazy and settle in on a game engine, which I am still leaning on Game Maker Studio, I actually do anything. I do not want to do pointless backtracking with, um, or grinding. Grinding is awful. I mean, in some games, in some instances, I can... I can allow grinding. Let's say you're just watching TV or or just doing a show. Or, or just some mindless task. You can you can grind in some games and it'll just be a mindless task. I can work it in Front Mission 3 um, by having my whatever I'm watching on one screen, having the grind on another screen, it's no problem. But um, it, it, it gets frustrating in games where you absolutely have to and those... Ooh, Poser? The, the 3D modeling thing? Yeah, I've been meaning to look into that for a while instead of just Source Filmmaker, but... Uh, I know nothing about Source Filmmaker, by the way. Um, ooh, that was quick. But... Uh, oh god, where was I? But yeah, I would very much love to uh, learn a game engine, and if I do game stuff, if you have to backtrack through a game... Oh god, I hate to... I, I kind of hate to say, say this. Backtracking is a failure of the game designer. Please don't hate me. Uh, <laughs> but, um... Yeah, if I have a game... Let's say, a Zelda-like. I would very much like to have a fast travel system as an option. Some people hate fast travel systems. Um, I think Witcher 3 did it well in that it's not like directly to um, a point, but it's like to a point of interest. Uh, delicious Jill sandwiches. Okay, well, one more mail and then I gotta bail. Okay, from Mirage. Nice job for a newcomer. We hope we can count on your continued support. Don't count on it! Press's notion that they are controller's selected representatives is becoming intolerable. Lair has matured, and it's time to forge ahead to the next level. We heard at Mira We hear- Ew, wow. We here at Mirage are prepared to make that happen, Raven. It's time to make a decision. We're confident you'll make the right one. God, yes, I'll make the right one. Okay. So, that was a thing that happened. Done missions for Crest, Mirage, the Cortex. Put in a few missions. I think that's a bit slower, but hey, a good full run. 
Oh, Bale like Christian Bale did from Terminator Salvation Set? You mean loudly? Oh, wow, I still kind of cringe a little bit when I watch that. Ooh. <laughs> when I watch that video, I do cringe just, just a bit. He really laid into that guy. He did publicly apologize, though. He, he was on a radio segment. He'd apparently called that dude up as well, and he did apologize for that, so that was that was good of him. But, damn, while it was happening, that was a shitstorm. Uh, but yeah, my nose is running, and so must I, so <laughs> sorry for that unflattering outro. Thank you again for stopping by. Welcome back, uh, Alaskan Emily and King Thunder. Tomorrow, I am going to hit that front mission three and stuff. Uh, maybe get hit by more mystery voices. But, uh, wow, I gotta go. I gotta, like, my brain is trying to escape my head. So, sorry about that. Um, thanks again for stopping by, and I'll see you when I see you. Obligatory popping noise. <laughs>